Just um, thanks for this opportunity. Um, my name is Linda Barry and I'm Student Affairs Manager um, at LIT. And what does that mean? I suppose that means for me is that I work with a fantastic team of people across student services who are here to support students um, throughout this academic year. Um, we're under no illusion um, the difficulties that everyone's experiencing with getting up and running in relation to this academic year um, and the challenges that are there for us in relation to, I suppose, making sure that we have um, everything we need in relation to getting up and running for an online lecture, the supports we need, the transport, etc. And all of that um, level of activity that needs to happen to bring us to LIT and to study in the programme of our choice. Um, I will say that um, I've worked in LIT a long time and this isn't because I work here. It is a fantastic institution with fantastic um, academic and professional staff that will support you. What I say to students every single year is no matter how good we are at our job, we don't have a crystal ball um, and we can't predict or look into it and know who needs help or who needs support. So I would encourage you um, during your time at the Institute that you would avail of the information that's online in relation to the services. You would connect with the services if you require a service. You would send an email if you have a query that needs to be answered. Um, and we're there um, to meet that need and to support your query in whatever way we can. Um, just to, I suppose, tick off a, a few of the areas. So we're going to hear from Caroline and Bros. Um, Caroline's our access officer and Bros. our disability officer um, in relation to the, the initiatives and supports that are going on in that office. Um, for anyone with any mental health difficulties or concerns around mental health, we have a student counselling service. So counselling at lit.ie. Um, head of service there is Noreen Keane and we are there to support any of your mental health needs. So please have a look at the website um, under the student services. It's students lit.ie forward slash student dot serv or dash services. Um, we, that's posted on the Engage programme. It's posted on the website um, and all the information in relation to the counselling service is available there. If you're having difficulty in relation to your academic needs and you're wondering about how you're going to get through the maths element, maybe um, you're not quite sure of a particular subject area, you need some support. There's a learning support unit that you can email and it's lsu at lit.ie. Again, the information is on the website. It's in the Engage program schedule um, and you can contact the learning support unit um, for some learning support. Um, our chaplaincy pastoral care. Um, service is available across the campuses um, and really you know if you need some pastoral care and support um, around this time you know they're there and available to contact and to reach out to by email by phone um, and they're on your campuses I suppose supporting your needs as, as much as as you'll present them and, and they're there for you one of the services they do use is the emergency fund which can support students in financial serious financial hardship it is by nature an emergency fund, but if you do find yourself in an emergency crisis, although it's limited, there is some support available um, through that. In relation to your health, I mean, health is foremost in everybody's mind and um, your physical health and, and the concerns around, you know, I suppose the, the current climate of COVID and, and being safe and, and being careful. Um, we are asking all students to sign up to our student charter um, and that is our COVID-19 charter, which is your um, responsibilities around wearing a mask, safe conduct and behaviour in relation to the public health guidelines and regulations. And we would ask you to please abide by them. It is really, really important. If you do have a concern um, around a health issue, including COVID, you can email nurses at lit.ie and they will respond to your query and how best to support you. Um, I'm not going to over talk anymore, except look, that's like a little whistle stop tour of, of the services that are available. Um, and I would encourage you to reach out and um, we're here for you. Um, your student leaders on all your campuses are playing an absolute blinder in relation to engaging with us and ye and kind of finding ways to help you navigate um, the on campus experience as well as the online student experience. Um, so engage with your student leaders as well. Some of them are here with us this afternoon um, on this session um, and they are available to you and they are just after graduating. So they've literally worn the T-shirt for the last couple of years and can support you um, to, to live your best life. And before I leave, um, 
we are like I suppose every year we get a get great students union. This year is definitely um, no different. So our students union um, on all the campuses are also there as a metric in relation to supporting you in your academic and and in your professional and in your um, support element of anything you'd need some support around. They're really active on social media and um, they have fantastic campaigns going at the moment, even in relation to mental health. And um, so please, you know, keep a, lo a log in with your students union and know they are also there as a support mechanism. So thanks for the um, open mic, if I dare say. Um, and um, I'm staying for the session. Um, but and I wish you all the very, very best. And, you know, we're here if you need us at any stage. Thanks, Anna. Annie, thanks, Linda. That's great. And as you say, you did a great with, with the tour there. Um, student services in a few in five minutes, which is fantastic, you know, so this, the main thing, as you've said, is for the students to keep an eye on the website, keep an eye on their student engaged page. And most importantly, if you're on campus, be sure and drop by and say hello to the student leaders because they are a mine of information. And now speaking of student leaders, we're going to start with our interviewer today. They'll all be doing interviews over the weeks. So our interviewer today is Jenny Dwyer and Jenny is our student leader on the Tipperary campuses. So she's dividing her time. She's traveling up and down through Cashel every day, as we say. She's dividing her time between the Thurlis and Clamell campuses. And again, has, as we said, like all the students, it is a mine of information to help you. So if you see any of them around in their red jackets, be sure and drop by and say hello to them and they can help you with any, any support you need. Now I'm going to hand over to Jenny. As Jenny, as Linda has said, is a graduate of just a first class honours graduate of business degree in Clamell. So she has delightedly come back and is sharing her experience with you as first year students. So Jenny, I'm going to hand the mic over to you now and um, you'll be interviewing our lovely access officer and disability officer and I'll let you go. I'm going back to mute now, Jenny, so you'll be happy to know. Thanks a million, Anna. Thanks very much for that introduction. Um, as you heard, my name is Jenny Murphy and I'm delighted to be the student leader for the Tipperary campuses. And I'm absolutely thrilled to have two great interviews for you today. Um, the first is Caroline Bar Bargery, excuse me, and Caroline is the access officer for LIT. It's quite a broad uh, service that's offered, so I'm delighted. I can't wait to get stuck in here now and find out what it entails. So, Caroline, first of all, can you tell us a little about, bit about the access service? Hi, Jenny. How are you today? Um, Good, good. Uh, first of all, can I just say on, on behalf of the Access Service, a very big welcome and a big shout out to all of our new students. Um, normally at this time of the year we'll be meeting you face to face, so it's a very different experience for us as staff as well. Um, so just to answer your question, Jenny, the Access Service has two strands really. I suppose broadly we come under the umbrella of student services overall. Um, but the Access Service itself has two strands. So there's like a pre-entry and there's a post-entry. So the pre-entry is where we work with schools and community groups um, and it's about the journey towards third level. So, for example, study clubs and student engagement before students actually come into third level. And then the second part of the access service is where we work on the post-entry supports. So it's the journey nearly to graduation. So that's the, that's broadly very um, giving a, again a whistle stop tour of the access service. The post entry, which we're talking about today, supports you know we work with um, mature students, students uh, with disability, and Rose is going to give a lot of detail on that today. Um, we would work with socioeconomic uh, disadvantaged uh, communities and um, students experiencing financial difficulties. So yeah, it's a very broad service. Um, and just to reiterate, actually, at the very start of this conversation, Jenny, something that Linda mentioned just there um, about the website. Um, so for all the students out there who are listening today, you know, at the very in, in the LIT website, there's a tab at the top called Life at LIT. If you click on that tab and you go down there, you'll see the access service. And that gives all the detail, all the email addresses and the context of the access staff and the services that we offer. OK, that's that's fantastic. Can you tell us more about, say, the financial supports that LIT has to offer? Right, OK, so we'd be very aware of the financial difficulties that students encounter um, when they come to college, you know, and the strain that it can put on families and students themselves. So um, one of the, I suppose, the biggest um, financial supports that would be offered would be through the Student Assistance Fund, OK, or the SAF, as we call it. Um, so the Student Assistance Fund, it's around a long, long time. 
and it's a government uh, funded initiative and it helps students um, with some of their financial costs while they're in third level. Now it by no means covers all of the costs um, and it's not there to cover registration or tuition fees. OK, so it covers um, or it doesn't cover, but it certainly supports towards like the cost of maybe travel or childcare or books or rent or things like that. Um, so to apply for the Student Assistance Fund, again, you go into the Life at LIT tab that I mentioned a few minutes ago and you go down along to the Access Service and there's a section there on financial assistance. You go in there and you'll find out all about the Student Assistance Fund. I uh, just want to say, Jenny, uh, that it, there are eligibility criteria and that um, that all that information will be there. Um, and just to note that the Student Assistance Fund is going live next week. Um, so students, when they come in um, on Monday, the form and all of the information will be there live for students next week from next Monday. That's terrific. Uh, just out of curiosity, would a student have to be interviewed to qualify for the fund? OK, very good question. Actually, no, um, not, there's no interview involved. What happens is when you will go into the LIT website where I mentioned uh, the, the access service, um, what you'll find is that there's an application there online. So you do the application form online and you will also upload all your supporting documentation there. So, for example, it was maybe um, it could be like a copy of your Susie letter or it could be um, a means tested uh, payment from social welfare or something like that. So there's a, a space there where you'll be able to upload all of your documentation. But quite, good question, Jenny. No, there's no interview process and um, you're assessed on the basis of the application that you sent in and that you meet eligibility criteria. And just on that as well, Jenny, this year, like we would have always operated a drop in service for students. And Anna would be very much aware of that students dropping into Brary as well with their documentation and in the access service in Moilition and SAD. And what happens is this year is that students will be able to upload everything online. So they're not dropping into the service. Unfortunately, this year we can't offer a drop in service because of the health restrictions. So the facility will be there online for students to upload everything they need. That's terrific. Um, other than the uh, SAF, is there any other financial supports available? Right, OK, uh, again, Linda mentioned there the emergency fund and the access service don't operate that, but sometimes we might refer students if they were in an emergency situation um, to the emergency fund. OK, so one of the other supports as well that we'd offer to mature students would be the mature student book lending scheme. Again, if students go in there to the Life at LIT and down to access, they'll find a tab there and everything is under financial assistance right. as that would be another thing. Um, and uh, one of the other I suppose, initiatives this year would be the government laptop scheme. That's really good. Could you um, expand on the government laptop scheme? Because I have had a few students inquire about it, but it'd be great if you could explain it. Right. OK, so the government laptop scheme, as we know, it was announced there during the summer by the government in response to the COVID-19 um, crisis. And it is there to support students um, in terms of it, it, it's a unit, a laptop for students. OK, it's it, that's what it is and um, who can demonstrate that they're in financial need of a laptop. So actually the scheme is opened, Jenny, um, it's opened a number of weeks and but the closing date is the 7th of October. So again, like that, if students go into the financial section of the access pages on our website, they'll find there a section, a tab for the government laptop scheme. You can go in there, you apply online and again, all supporting documentation is uploaded there. You know, it is we don't have a laptop. I suppose for everybody at LIT, Jenny, that's the way it's operated. We're only given, you know, so much funding. Um, but certainly if students, if they feel they're eligible and they can apply and they can demonstrate they're in financial need, then they can go into there, into that tab there and um, just apply online. I would suggest as well that sometimes, Jenny, when they see closing dates, that they might push it out and they'll wait until the last day. But because you require supporting documentation, it's very important that you have that ready so you can upload it. So if your know, students, if they can maybe go in there today and have a look and see what's required. That's terrific. Thank you so much, Caroline. And just finally, now I know you've mentioned it already. If there's anything that we've covered today that a student needs to find out more about or would like to get in touch with yourself and your uh, colleagues, what uh, will be the email address? 
Yeah, so it's access at lit.ie. Um, that's the, our, our main address. And the Student Assistance Fund is saf at lit.ie. But again, Jenny, if you go into the access service pages, homepage, you'll find all of the context for individual staff members. We've quite a big team um, of in the access service. So, for example, there is somebody you know who minds the HEAR scheme for students. So any HEAR students that would be listening today, again, you know, go in there and you'll find your contact there. And um, I suppose this year, Jenny, more than any other year, I would be saying to students, please stay in touch with your email. You know, it's really, really important that we're able to, to contact you through email and check your email account regularly. And um, it's how we communicate with students. And again, with regards to the website, it's really important that they keep up to date with the website because things will be changing as we move throughout the year. You know, and that's where we'll be informing students of opening dates, closing dates, payment runs, things like that. So it's very important that students keep this year, particularly this year, on top of their email accounts and keeping in touch with our web pages. That's terrific. Thank you so much, Caroline. Thank you very much for all that information. No problem, Jenny. Very Thank welcome. You. And now next up, we have Bros O'Donovan. And Bros is the disability officer with LIT. You're welcome, Bros. Would you like to give Thank us you, Jenny. an introduction? Thank you very much. I'm here in Moylish at the moment in my office, and they're, they're cutting the lawn outside. So if there's a little <laughs> bit of noise, I can't do anything about it. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's fine. So, Bros, um, how would a student uh, register for support from the disability office? Yeah, OK, so we've changed our procedures quite significantly this year. So in the past, Jenny, it used to be an in-person meeting um, that for the needs assessment where we go through with a student all of their requirements, say, for example, if they need a PA or a note taker, a sign language interpreter, um, some students might need exam supports like a spelling and grammar waiver or extra time. There's a number of different um, supports a student might require. Uh, we also have a dedicated um, staff member who works with students with uh, dyslexia as well on, on all the campuses. So this year, rather than an in-person meeting um, due to the health regulations, similar to what has happened with the SAF, as well as Carol Ann was saying, we've had to move everything online. So um, we've had about 27 students now complete an online needs assessment. Um, it takes about 20 minutes to do. It might take you a little longer if you're trying to find your um, your documentation and so on. Um, so you might want to have that to hand so you can upload it straight when you're doing um, the online needs assessment. So Anna, is it possible for you to bring up the page? Would that be okay? Just so the students know exactly what it looks like. It's essentially on the access service um, web page on LIT. If you go to the disability uh, section, you'll see a button there that says apply for support here or register here. So Anna might get that up in a second. That's, there's no, no panic there. Um, so if you just click in that, it will prompt you to complete um, a form on Microsoft Forms. OK, so it, again, it takes about 20 minutes to do. Um, but the good news is once you've done that, you're registered. OK, and you only need to do it once during your time in LIT. So any requirements that you let us know about, they then will carry over to each subsequent year. OK, so following completion of that form, once we receive it, the appropriate staff member will get back to you as you've instructed us. So you have three options. It's either telephone follow up, email follow up or in person follow up. If there is an exceptional reason why we needed you needed to meet us in person, we'd be happy to facilitate that. Um, but we're trying obviously to cut that out as much as we can at the moment. Um, so after after we've received it, we follow up with you and we issue an academic inclusion notice. OK, which is based on the information that you've given us. OK, and then that is then in your hands. It's your document and then you use that to inform your lecturers about any. Here we are. OK, so yeah. So if you just scroll down a little bit there, Anna, to the disability yeah. section. Yeah, and you'll see that um, just the link there. Um, yeah, so I'll just go back to explaining there um, the academic inclusion notice then is your document to give to your lecturers whom you wish to inform about your about your requirements. Does that make sense? That it does. It does. And it's great there uh, that you stress that everything has gone online. But if yeah. if it, if a need is it needs be you will meet someone in person. Yes. 
Yeah, if, if you feel more comfortable um, meeting us, you might have very complex needs. Um, yeah. We'd be very happy to meet you in person. Um, what we've been, what we found is actually working at the moment is because there's fewer, less footfall on the campuses. We don't necessarily meet in an office space. We might, we might meet at a more open location once the student is happy for that. There's very few people around at certain times in the week, so we're able to gauge that for confidentiality um, yeah. if a student wishes. But so far, we've had um, 26 responses, I believe it is, and of that, I think two students have asked for in-person meetings. So it seems that a lot of students are happy um, to have follow-up through email or telephone, or of course, there's also the option of an MS Teams um, meeting as well. Yeah, that's brilliant, Rose. Um, just on that as well, if, say, a student's documentation might be out of date, what should they do? Okay, it, it very much depends, Jenny, on the individual need. Um, in a lot of cases, like we'll certainly register a student for support um, with even if they don't have up to date documentation. Okay, there's an option on the online needs assessment form to indicate documentation pending. OK, so it won't let you proceed unless you tick one option. So if you don't have it to hand, just tick documentation pending. And then there's all see there's the button there. OK, you right. can see the button. The mouse is just by that. So if you click in there, it prompts you to uh, log into your student account. OK, and then it will take you through. So you must be a registered LIT student to complete it. OK. okay. Um, yeah, but but as I was saying, um, we'll still support you. We'll still go through your needs and your requirements with you, and then we'll advise you on an individual basis of what you should do in regard to your documentation. It's often quite a simple way of fixing it. You might just need to get a statement from your GP. Um, or something along those lines. Yeah. That's great. Um, say if a student came through the DARE admission scheme, um, yeah. what should they do then? Okay, so if you um, came through the DARE scheme, as many students do, uh, we will get a copy of your documentation from the CAO. Now, we're in the process of downloading those at the moment, so that's a, a a multi-disciplinary um, approach there between admissions, CSD and ourselves. So we hope to have that completed in the next few days and then we will contact you via email um, just to clarify that you're in fact attending LIT and um, to prompt you to complete the needs assessment, the online needs assessment. So if you know um, that you came in through there, you can go right ahead. You don't have to wait for us to call you or, or email. You can go ahead and fill in the online needs assessment um, straight away. And then we'll follow, we'll have your documentation there when it comes through. So you can just tick documentation pending. Perfect. And can you still receive uh, supports if you don't um, come, come through, through there. there? Yeah. Yeah, that's a question we get all the time, actually, Jenny. And yes, you absolutely can. Um, DARE is strictly an admissions scheme. OK, so essentially it, it it gives you some extra support in getting through the door of LIT. And then from that point, um, we treat any student who presents with a disability or a medical condition or dyslexia exactly the same, whether they came through DARE or not. That's brilliant. Um, okay. just, I know you touched on it earlier there, but what would be the supports available when exams, you know, for examination? Yeah. Yeah, so some of a lot of students with, say, dyslexia might have um, the requirement of maybe a spelling and grammar waiver and extra time. So in LIT, we we have an allowance of 10 minutes per hour extra time as the standard provision where a student can verify that they require it through their documentation. Um, we also we have some students who might need to write in a separate center if they experience um, say they might experience ADD, ADHD and they need a low distraction venue. Um, some students with mental health conditions might also feel um, slightly less anxious if they were in a separate venue as well. OK, um, as opposed to the main exam hall, we also have um, some students who might require, say, access to food. If they have a medical condition, they might require that during their exams so you know there's a, a reader as well if your reading is below a certain percentile you might benefit from a reader um, and in some cases a student might use voice activation software if you feel you're very proficient with the software um, students might use a scribe okay so literally someone writing for you um, and generally speaking like we do have some students who would record answers but that's that's generally at the moment um, it would be mainly that somebody would actually scribe for you or you could type on a computer. So basically okay. at exam times, whatever disability is is there, you have um, the support there for exams. 
Yes. Yeah. And it is very individualized. And even yeah. students might find it can change from year to year. So for their first um, set of exams, they might think they need X, Y, and Z. And in fact, um, they also need A and B or, or they only need X. Do you know what I mean? So we can always go back and revisit it. It's not written in stone. And um, but I suppose the key thing really for students to remember is that we don't um, know it unless you tell us. OK, so we're not going to necessarily we will contact you for a needs review if you're registered with us. But don't wait until we contact you, essentially, is what I'm saying. You know, get in touch anytime, email us anytime, request a meeting anytime. OK, and then we'll do our best to make any switches or changes that you feel you need. And sometimes a student might um, you know, register for dyslexia support and then a year into their program they might experience a medical condition okay so then things can change like that as well some students might have a new diagnosis halfway through their studies so you know you're it's certainly not limited to first year students either that's terrific that's great to know um just uh, i suppose throughout the year what would be the supports for um studies you know yeah, yeah, absolutely. So LIT, uh, you may have already found out about the learning support unit. Um, so that's available to all students. Um, you don't need to experience a particular need to use the use that service. But we do find that a lot of our students, uh, particularly if there's a learning difference, they would benefit from ongoing learning support. Now, by ongoing, I mean within reason as well, because you'll be very busy with your coursework. So um, we do have to be reasonable in the amount that can be provided, but it can be tremendous beneficial you know when it's used strategically by the student maybe before a big assignment is due or before the exam period starts or whatever the case is so we're happy to put through referrals and some students just by nature of their learning difference they might require significantly more support from the learning support unit than others that's great um just bros um what is is there a fund available for students with disabilities OK, there is, but there's a bit of a caveat to that one. Um, it's called the Fund for Students with Disabilities, and it's a fund managed by LIT in order to um, cover the cost of support the student might require. So, for example, if a student did need ongoing learning support, obviously there's a cost attached to that. So that fund would could go towards um, that, that kind of a cost. Or some students with physical or sensory needs might require some assistive technology and that fund allows us to purchase it. So yes, there is a fund there. It's just important to understand that it's not um, money into the hand, so to speak. It's a fund available for learning supports that is managed by LIT. That's terrific. So, right, you've given us all the, a lot of supports there. Um, you know, if a student feels they're actually falling behind, what should they do? Mm. OK, yeah, the most important thing is to flag it with us as soon as you feel there might be a, a bit of a concern. Um, generally speaking, the earlier you address it, the much more likely it can be resolved, um, whereas there's very little, obviously, that we can do um, with a problem in February as opposed to if you brought it to us in November, do you know? So it's really very much, I suppose there is a lot of different things we can do. We can support you in um, getting extra learning support. We can sometimes, if it's appropriate, support you in negotiating with lecturers around extensions and things like that. We can, you know, confirm your registration for particular supports and so on. Um, but it's just really important that you flag it. And sometimes I think it can be easy to feel a little bit lost, especially in your first year um, when everything's new and different and so on, especially in the current the current um, with current regulations. It makes it very unusual for all of us. Usually the access service is absolutely hopping this time of year with people in and out constantly. And we're in meetings all day with students. But obviously that's changed dramatically this year. So I can understand for students how to be really easy to feel a bit lost in that. So the main thing is there's always a person at the end of that email address. So get in touch. Um, even if you don't even, you can't fully explain what you think the problem is, get in touch, ask for a callback, ask for an MS Teams meeting, and we will get in touch with you. We'll follow up as soon as we can. Okay. Rose, just one final question. Yeah. Um, yeah. Are there many uh, students with disabilities in LIT? Yeah, sure. That's a good question. There actually is. There's uh, nearly 600 students. Now, I think the exact number is about 578. So it can, it can go fluctuate month to month, obviously, as people and 
register or maybe finish up their studies, but um, there's a very high number. So we're very proud of that. And, and you know, it's a big part of inclusivity in LIT that we have so many students who come forward and feel comfortable to disclose that they have additional needs because that hasn't always, you know, going back many, many years, students mightn't have felt comfortable. So we're glad that they do. And we have a lot of students as well who disclose mental health conditions, um, which is very positive to see. Um, so yeah, there's a you're certainly not uh, on your own if you do choose to disclose a need to us. That's really wonderful to know. Rose, thank you so much. It's been terrific talking thank to you. And Carol yep. Ann, thank you so much as well. And I now hand you back to Anna Fitzgerald. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Thanks, especially, of course, to Linda, Carol Ann, and to Rose for being for, for uh, offering to be interviewed and uh, uh, volunteering is what I tell them that, that they did to be interviewed. But a special thanks to Jenny. Jenny, I've had a call from RTE looking for an interviewer if you're busy. If you're not busy, but remember you have to finish up your time with us as student leader first, so you do. So listen, as I said again, listen, thank you everybody for joining us. If you have any questions, be sure, check out the website pages, drop us all an email, we're here to help. And as I say, if you see those lovely people that are going around all your campuses with their red jerseys, our lovely student leaders, go and drop in and say hello to them and have a chat with them. OK, thank you again. And uh, we're going to finish our meeting for today. Goodbye to everybody. Have a good day and we'll see you all again. Please God next Wednesday. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thanks. Thank Bye. you. Bye.